Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Terramina, co-host of Between Terraminas and also host of History Now. Both of those shows are on Orion Neighborhood Television, ONTV. And I'm here with my guest, Coach Bell. Coach, how are you doing? Good, Anthony. Good, 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 good. Um, I wanted to recap... Um, I wanted to recap last season before we talk about this season. Um, last season we were four and five, but we were the last team to make the playoffs in Division One. Had a very tough schedule with a very young team. Um, we had we had some really really good games. Um, we Utica Eisenhower were a game that could have went either way. Um, Oxford we won that game. Uh, we got were able to get the Double O Trophy back in Lake Orion. Uh, Stony Creek, a very tough road game against a very good team. Played Adams, played West Bloomfield, played Clarkston, played Celine, all tough. And um, we're able to get our wins in the um, crossover games against Oak Park and North Farmington. Um, I want to recap, let's talk about um, last year's team, um, if you can. What was it like with last year's team? Uh, it was a great group of kids. Um, you know, it was, it took us a while to get going. You know, I, I look up, look back to game one, and uh, in game one, I really felt like uh, our defense really played well. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like offensively, you know, we we, uh, we struggled a little bit offensively. But, uh, you know, we, we had the lead mm -hmm. uh, late in the third quarter, put together a nice drive, and, uh you know, we, we got near the goal line and uh, we fumbled the football down on the goal line. And had we scored there at the end of the third, it would have put us up two scores. Mm -hmm. And they were really, and Eisenhower was really struggling. You know, we, we, were, we were playing pretty fast and our tempo was good. And you could tell that, that we, we had them on the ropes. But, uh, you know, we, we fumbled the ball and the ball actually just took a a nice hop for them, and the linebacker caught it on the run and ran it back 95 yards. Changed the game, and then we got the ball back in our first series. Uh, we threw a bad interception, and they ran that back. So in a matter of, literally in a matter of a minute, we went from possibly putting the game away to holy cow, we're now down two scores. And, uh, you know, and we just, we, we, we weren't really ready uh, yeah, we, it was tough for us to play from behind. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, so that, you know, fortunately the kids rebounded the next week and we came out the next week and, and we beat the, you know, we thought it was going to be a good Oak Park team. They're always talented, they're well coached, mm -hmm. and, you know, we really put a nice game together and we went on a little bit of a run. Um, but still, you know, I don't know if yet if we really believe that we could compete with the better teams in our league. Mm -hmm. So it took us a while, you know, to learn that, you know, if we do things the right way that we can compete. And, uh, you know, we, and we finally, you know, I thought made that turn where we knew we could be a good football team. Um, we did play a tough schedule. We did get in the playoffs, mm -hmm. which, you know, I told the kids, I said, you know, we, we finished four and five. But, you know, I, I really felt like we were a top 32 team in our division. We deserved to be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, most importantly... It was great for our young guys to get that playoff experience, understand what that atmosphere is like. And a lot of times, once you're there, you know the kids want to go back. Mm -hmm. You know they, they want to be part of it. They they were excited about it. Uh, you know we lost in a high scoring game to Rochester Adams. Yep. Um, you know again Adams had a phenomenal player that we struggled to shut down. But you know I, I but we you know we managed to score a lot of points as well. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot. So I think last year was was a lot of growth. Um, you know, I you know, I had been, you know, it was my first year back after a, you know, five-year absence. And, uh, you know, I think the kids had to get used to me again. They had mm -hmm. to get used to some of the new terminology and some of the things that we brought back. And and uh, so it's kind of a learning curve for everybody. But the one thing about last year, uh, great kids. They came to work every day, positive attitudes, you know, zero off-the-field issues. Uh, you know, really loved coaching those guys. And I think that's 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 the greatest thing is every day was fun with them and I really uh, appreciated those guys last year. Knowing how tough the OA Red was last year, um, five out of the six teams and all six of those teams were very deserving of making the playoffs, but five of the six teams in the OA Red made the playoffs. How tough was the OA Red last year? It, it's every year, it's a dogfight, every year. You know, it, every team is good. If you don't bring your A game, you're gonna get beat. 
It doesn't matter who you play. It doesn't matter if it's Oxford, it doesn't matter if it's Tony Creek, Rochester Adams, Clarkson, West Bloomfield. It doesn't matter. you got to bring your A game. That's what it was like last year. And, you know, and, and, and we don't – the fact we play in a tough division, there's no excuses. We expect to win our division. That's our goal every year, to win our division. And if we don't win our division, we, don't, you know, we didn't reach one of our goals. So, you know, we expect we're used to being among the upper echelon of that division, and we expect to be there again. One thing that we did struggle with um, – looking at it was a very young team last year you guys compete against some very experienced teams last year because Adams was very veteran heavy Clarkson was very veteran heavy West Bloomfield Stony Creek um, but one of the things that I, I saw when I looked at our wins and our losses in our losses we gave up between 30 to 40 points and uh, uh, have we made any adjustments on the defensive side of the ball yeah, you know, a lot of that, too, is, is the teams we played were very, mm -hmm. very talented. I yes. mean, you had some elite athletes over there that, you know, I, I went to see uh, Ethan Clark. You know, he, he had a, a big day against us. Mm -hmm. and that, you know, I went in the playoffs to watch Clarkson play Davison, and Davison had some players. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. if anybody can stop, Davison can. And Ethan Clark ran for about 350 and four or five touchdowns against Davison. So he was doing that against everybody. Mm -hmm. But... Um, we have, uh, I give my defensive staff a lot of credit. We, we mm -hmm. have taken a look at our scheme. We are making some adjustments that we think better fits our personnel that we have. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, a, you know, we, we, we were sound last year. Uh, we just, we didn't play, at times we didn't play very well. We weren't, we weren't the very fundamental, uh, I don't think, on either side of the ball. So, and that, and that, to me, that was my, one of my biggest disappointments. And I, I hold myself responsible. We've got to be fundamentally sound on both sides of the ball. Uh, but our defensive staff has worked really hard, and uh, you know we, we've tweaked our scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think we, we're running a package this year that best fits our personnel. It's a little more of a, an aggressive, get after you, blitzing type scheme. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think it really fits our personnel. And I'm excited about it. I just wanted to also recap um, both the JV and the freshman teams from last season. JV finished seven and two. Uh, they had very, some very good wins against Stony Creek, West Bloomfield, Grand Ledge, and a rainstorm. I remember that one very well. And then Celine on a Saturday morning. Um, how excited are you about the, J the JV players in coming in, up into the varsity program? Well, that's a great class. They had a class, uh, you know, even they, they had a very good year last year, and we had you know, five to six of their players from that class. Mm -hmm. So imagine how good they would have been if those guys had not been with us as sophomores. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a tremendous class. So, you know, we're really excited about those guys. And then the freshman team went three and six last year, despite the record. They had a lot of close games against Oxford, Stony Creek, where those were, those were games that could have went either way. Got strong wins against Eisenhower, West Bloomfield, and beat North Farmington's JV team. They got better at the end of the season. Um, how do you think they're going to look for JV? I think they'll be solid. You know, again, they, uh, you know, they, it was a smaller group, uh, but again, some really good athletes in there, and uh, you know, they've really worked hard this summer. I think I think they're going to be in good shape and should have a solid season. I want to look at I want to look at the uh, a lot of positives from last season. As I said, making the playoffs. Um, very young group, learning a lot. Um, were there, how, were there a lot of other, also being able to get the double O trophy back, um, being, getting some good road wins as well. Um, talk about the positives from last season. You know what, they just, these guys just show up to work. You know, and a lot of it, we, we had a good group of seniors last year, especially mm -hmm. defensively. We had a, mm -hmm. a veteran defensive line, uh, some really good linebackers last year that were seniors, and those guys would be hard to replace. Offensively, we, re, we do return eight out of 11 starters. Um, we lost our two tackles, and we lost uh, Dorian Hill, one of our wide receivers. So mm -hmm. Dorian's going to be tough to replace, and tackles were great kids. Um, but last year was just work ethic. I mean, they used to have, they, they, the guys work hard, and that's what I told them. I, I cannot credit, I cannot uh, fault them at all for their preparation and the work ethic. Now we just have to be better. You know, it's, it's about, uh, you know, and then our motto of, of be great. Mm -hmm. The E in there stands for effort and execution. You can give great effort, but if you're not executing, it doesn't matter. So it's, it's attention to detail, and, it, and we need to give great effort, but we need to make sure that we're executing and doing what we need to do. You brought this up. Um, what, the, what is the theme for this upcoming season? You brought up the, e, the, the, the E's. 
Um, the, you know, our, our motto, every year we try to have, we have a motto. Our, mm -hmm. our motto this year is, is be great. And uh, it's an acronym. You know, mm -hmm. B stands for believe. You got you have to have belief in what you're doing. And I think that we, like I said, about last week, about halfway through the year, our kids finally believe that we could compete with the elite again. So, the, so number one is so B believe, and then great uh, G stands for gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very lucky to be playing this game, and there's a lot of people that support us in getting here. We want our kids to recognize that, you know, be thanking mom and dad, be thanking your teachers, be thanking your trainers, be thanking your teammates. Play, you know, have gratitude every day. R is about being resilient. The game of football, you're going to get knocked down. You know, the other team may score first. You might turn the ball over. You got to be resilient. You got to go on to the next play. You can never get yourself down. E, obviously we talked about effort and, mm -hmm. effort and execution. A is about attitude. You got to bring a great attitude every single day. And T stands for uh, stands for team, but also stands for toughness. It's a tough game, and in our league, you better play tough, you better be tough. Uh, so T represents both team and toughness. Obviously, those are that's a very, very good, very good theme this year. Be that's a re, that's a really, really good well, theme. Great is is a goal, mm -hmm. but it's something that you never really reach. Let, mm -hmm. Let's chase greatness. What does that look like? We don't know, but let's keep chasing greatness, and hopefully, you know where we end up is a, is a pretty special spot. Still able to retain the old Lake Orion tradition, like Orion Tough. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's what we're built on. You got it. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this upcoming team this year. You return eight out of eleven on the offensive side of the ball. Um, also, defense. It will be defense. I'm very curious to see. Can you talk about the varsity team this year? Yeah, skill wise, uh, you know, obviously we, we return. Uh, Tristan Hill took over as a quarterback about midway through the year mm -hmm. and uh, you know so he returns he'll be a junior mm -hmm. and TR uh, can throw it can run it um, tremendous weapon uh, Billy Roberson one of the best running backs in the state of Michigan might be the best running back we've ever had Billy's had a great offseason he's got multiple division one offers mm -hmm. uh, Billy is special and he, and he works very very hard um, Raymond Payne and Jackie Vasquez are two very special slot receivers. Raymond as well. Raymond is a Division One athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, Raymond's a highlight film with the ball in his hands, and he's a threat to go every time. And Jackie's just one of those old-fashioned, tough, talented, you know, Orion guys. You mm -hmm. know, Jackie he can he can run it, he can catch it, he can block, he'll block. You know, Jackie does it all. Uh, Dom Novak returns. Mm -hmm. um, as as our leading receiver, Dom's had a great off season. You know, he's, his speed has increased. He's got good height, good hands, runs good routes, and he just competes. And uh, Joey Debrinket is finally mm -hmm. healthy. Joey can play inside, can play outside. Um, and then we also have uh, some guys, uh, and Grady Harbin can play out there. Mm -hmm. um, and Jabari uh, Cooper also can play out there. So we, we've got a lot of guys, a lot of pieces. Um, you know, we're excited about Travis Acker, who's a backup running back for us as well. So there's there's a lot of talent, a lot of speed, and we can do a lot of things. What about on the defensive side of the ball? One player we didn't bring up with him, Caden, Caden, Katie. Katie DeGraffney. Well, Katie, well, let me go back on, on offense. You know, our, our offensive line, um, you know, we returned Alex Russell up front. Connor O'Rourke's a three-year starter. Mm -hmm. uh, Brendan Nepchuk started for us last year as a sophomore. Well, Brendan's going to flip over to the defensive side. He'll be on the defensive line. He'll still, still play some offensive line. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sam Blakely is coming back at a tackle, and Sam got a lot of playing time for us last year. And Sam's also a basketball a, kid, too. He's done a great job in the offseason. We're really excited about Sam. Jacob Escobedo uh, mm -hmm. started for us last year, then got hurt and missed the rest of the season. But he's back, and he's had a good offseason. So we're really excited. And Landon Morris, who started with us, then up playing some JV ball mm -hmm. and then came back. And Landon's had a great summer, not just with us, but he's also uh, been wrestling in, the, yes. in these Greco-Roman and freestyle wrestling tournaments and, oh, doing, yes. and has been outstanding. So he's going to have a good year. So we expect to be really solid up front there. Uh, the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, from uh, uh, Trey Pacamara, who's now a three-year mm -hmm. starter at corner, Austin Kahn returns to the corner, so we expect our corners to be really good. Mm -hmm. Raymond may see some corner as well. Um, we've got uh, uh, AJ Lights, um, the, uh, Corbin Smith mm -hmm. um, is all they're returning at safety. Um, also, uh, uh, we return one of our safeties, Parker 
Uh, he's he's uh, he's finally healthy. We missed him all last year. Mm -hmm. um, the KD is KD right now. Uh, you know, he's an outside backer for us, plays safety. Mm -hmm. uh, but KD can play anywhere. He might play inside. Um, we have uh, uh, Nagri's going to play one of our linebacker spots. Mm -hmm. We know he's in great shape. He's ready to go. Uh, a little guy, uh, Lane Garris, Ryan McCartan, two little guys mm -hmm. get after on the defensive line. Parker Brissett's had a great off season. Uh, so he's you know he's another guy who'll factor in there on the defensive line. So again, uh, Dylan Caldwell, done a, or Christian Caldwell rather, Dylan's mm -hmm. his brother. Yep. Christian's done a great job in the off season. Um, we're just excited. We're, we're excited to see it see it all come together. You know, Corbin Smith started for us the last couple of years. This will be his senior year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited to see them all come together. And and uh, you know it's we have a lot of different pieces. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think I mentioned uh, A.J. Lights has had a great mm -hmm. offseason. So they're going to work themselves out. You know, we've got multiple safeties. Will one come down and play outside linebacker? We've got multiple linebackers. Which one's going to play the mic? Which one's going to come down and play the stud? Where are we good outside? Mm -hmm. Travis Acker, good factor in outside. Uh, defensive line-wise, Alex Russell. Uh, Sam Blakely may also flip over and play some defensive line. So it all depends on what we need at the time and who we're going to play and the best matchups, but we got a lot of pieces. Let's talk about the sub varsities this year. Um, what are you looking for from the JV and the freshman programs this year? Let's start with JV. Yeah, you know, they've had good summers. You know, we've got a new JV coach in mm -hmm. uh, Corey Bell. We're going to talk about um, that. Yep. So he's uh, he, you know he's bringing a lot of experience from Avondale, and uh, um, Jacob Simon, our freshman coach, has done it. They, they've really done a lot a lot of work with their kids this summer. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the kids are prepared and ready to go. They understand the systems, and I think you know I, I think uh, both both should do very well. We're really excited about uh, our quarterbacks as well. You know, we've had a couple quarterbacks that the young guys have worked out with us and and uh, um, have done a great job. So we're, you know we're pretty quarterback strong throughout the program, which really mm -hmm. helps at all levels. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how um, how everything meshes. Obviously, with the freshman level, you got two very solid middle school teams combining them to make one freshman team. We didn't have that last year with the numbers, um, so I'm very curious. I'm very excited to see how the two middle school teams, Lake Orion Green, Lake Orion White, they combine to become one big freshman. Yeah, team. I think our fresh numbers will be up. Mm -hmm. You know, our fresh numbers last year we were about uh, uh, high 30s to low 40s, which mm -hmm. is really low for us. But there's talented kids in there. That's right. the thing is there's some good kids. You don't have to have, you don't have, to have there's comfort in numbers. Right. But we'd rather have talent too. So right. and there there are some good, talented, hard working, multiple sport athletes in that class. So it, it's still gonna be a good class for us. I'm excited about this season. You just talking to you right now. You got me excited. I'm ready to run away from Lake Orion football. Yeah, we are too. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to have to, we're going to take a brief break. We'll be right back with the Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. The Friends of the Orion Township Library are looking for book donations and volunteers for their next gently used book sale. With the goal of promoting reading, literacy, and lifelong learning, the nonprofit organization began in 1985 and is the liaison between the community and its library. All but a fraction of the money raised by the Friends is donated for program funding, material, and monetary contribution for the library. If you are interested in learning more, please visit orionlibrary.org slash friends. Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ON TV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. I'm here with Coach Bell. Coach, how you doing? You're doing great. One thing that I noticed is, um, one thing I noticed when we were talking about that last segment was a lot of the kids play multi-sport at or multi -sp play multiple sports. I, I think about basketball. I think about lacrosse. I think about um, wrestling. I mean, talk about the importance of multi-sport athletes. You know, I it's something that I think that just makes all of our teams better. You know, Andrew Parker is a great example. Andrew Parker is one of the area's best lacrosse players. Mm -hmm. He also is a very good football player. We're ha so we're happy to have him back after an injury last year. Um, the instincts are, that are needed in both games, the awareness that he has, uh, the ability to move and to cut, and just, you know, it's a great example of where each sport has helped make the other one better. Um, you know, we've got a ton of baseball players. You know, we've got a ton of lacrosse kids. We've got wrestlers. we got 
basketball players. The biggest thing being with having multi-sport athletes, and this is what I work with my coaches on, being the idea is we have to share. Mm -hmm. You know, I have kids that I might have them for a couple of weeks, and they may, might be gone for a week or two because of baseball. Might be gone for a week or two because of lacrosse, or you know, they, we do our stuff in the morning to free them up so they go play basketball at night. So, and it's okay if they miss some things playing other sports because we know they're competing. We know they're getting better. Mm -hmm. They're not sitting on the couch eating potato chips. Right. We know they're doing something positive. Like Landon. Landon's been around all. He's been around all summer competing as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Landon's going to come in in shape, tough, ready to go, and it'd be, even though he's been wrestling most of the summer. So that, that's the biggest thing. Being a multiple sport athlete makes you a better athlete. Specialization. One thing that, that I see a lot right now is I see. It happens with volleyball players, it happens in all sports, with volleyball players especially. I see it with baseball players. I see it with soccer players. I see certain injuries. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those injuries happen with single sport athletes with overuse. For example, you might be a volleyball player, and all year long, all you're doing is jumping and swinging. Well, the knees go, the shoulder goes. Mm -hmm. You're much better served by playing some other sports and strengthening those muscles and giving you know, that muscle group a break. Same thing with baseball players. You know, baseball players, you know, we, we lost a couple of baseball players this year due to injury. Mm -hmm. Both the guys that we lost were single sport athletes. They're ba year round baseball players. Mm -hmm. If they had played other sports, would that have helped them? I, I don't know. I think it would have. But I will tell you this in working with college coaches who recruit our athletes, mm -hmm. college coaches are interested in multiple sport athletes. Mm -hmm. Given the choice and offering kids scholarships, they will offer, a ki if both are equal, they will offer that, that player who's a multiple sport athlete mm -hmm. over the single sport athlete any day. Because they know that multi-sport athlete knows how to compete, mm -hmm. knows how to be a great teammate, you know, just know knows how to be committed year-round. And, and 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 there's, if nothing else, as a young athlete, it, it cures boredom. Right. I don't care what sports you have. If you if you have one sport that's all you work on year-round, kids get bored. Mm -hmm. They they need a break. I see that from experience. Obviously, yeah. being in being with um being at Oakland with um. With Coach Campy, seeing Michigan State with Coach Izzo, and seeing all the they prefer multi-sport athletes for yeah. the most part. And you look at some of the, you know, you look at Aaron Judge. Now, granted, he's a, he's a freak athlete. He's a three-sport guy. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom Brady, three-sport guy. These mm -hmm. guys, you know, they, so these guys, you know, their their other sports help them in their current sport. And the other thing is, is I hate to see young people give up on a sport that they have the ability to play and excel at. Mm -hmm. Because once you're done with high school, you don't get to play these things anyway, again. Mm -hmm. You know, you get one shot to go through. And once you're through, yeah, maybe you'll play slow pitch softball. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you'll play some pickup volleyball. You know, but it's hard to find those sports to compete in. You know, you got one shot to go through and play basketball with your buddies or play right. baseball with your buddies or play football with your buddies. Mm -hmm. You know, lacrosse, but you know, enjoy that. Because those are memories you have the rest of your life. One of my favorite stories, if I can share this, is... um. I had a, a player who tried out for basketball years and years ago and um, didn't make the basketball team, so I recommended him to go do boy swimming, and he excelled in boy swimming. Absolutely. And, that, and that's definitely one of my favorite stories that I wanted to share because that was like, encourage him to do multiple sports, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and as I said, multi-sport athletes. It's great experiences. You, know, great. you build other muscle groups. You're making friends. You're involved in a positive activity, mm -hmm. whole deal. Being a multi-sport athlete is, is the way to go. So if anybody ever says that, that we at Lake Orion encourage single-sport athletes, it cannot be anything further from the truth. And my coaches know that. We all want our mm -hmm. kids to be really good at our sport, but we know and we believe in sharing athletes and developing athletes as multiple-sport mm -hmm. kids. I agree 100% about that. Um, I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about the coaches. Um, Obviously, Coach Bell, explain explain a little bit about yourself. Oh, I've been, been doing this a long time, and I'm, I'm really fortunate that I get the opportunity to come back and do it again. And there's nothing like being able to work with uh, the young men in, in the game of football, in my opinion. And just, you know, we have a ton of fun. And I, I, that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing is I really, that's really what I miss. I mean, I, I you know, I, I really enjoy working with our players, competing with our players, and, and it, uh, you know, so it's re, it re-energizes me. It's a lot, you know, uh, being mm -hmm. the head football coach and the athletic director. But it's a, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's it's what I love to do. It's, it's what I'm passionate about. And uh, if I, as long as I can help, 
and I also can do it where I'm also taking care of doing my job and taking care of all the other sports as well. Mm -hmm. As long as I can do that in a positive fashion, then I'm, I'm glad I'm able to do this. That's awesome. Um, I noticed a couple of coaches returned this season, Coach Fisher and Coach Heath. Can you talk about both of them? Yeah, you know what? Uh, last year on the offensive side, Coach Fisher and I have worked together for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, I, 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 just, I, I, I missed working with him. He brings some things to the table that just make us better. And he knows football inside and out. He's great with the kids. And he and I work well together. So mm -hmm. I just felt... You know, bringing him back on board has really made us better as an offensive staff. Uh, mm -hmm. Coach Heath and I go way back as well. Uh, he does a great job as a running back coach. For him, it was more of a, a work, his, his job, as well as, you know, he, with Jeff playing in the NFL, mm -hmm. you know, he, he got a chance to travel and see his son play and, it was, you, know, what, you know, what a highlight that would be. So, you know, he had to step down uh, for those reasons, but now with Jeff being retired from playing and also mm -hmm. his job now, is allowing him a little more flexibility, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's great having him back as well. Can we talk about the um, other returning coaches on the varsity staff? Um, Coach Blackstock, Coach E, Coach Gannon, Coach Powell, and others. You know, we, we're very lucky to have a great coaching staff. Uh, you know, we all believe in, in, we have the same philosophy in terms of working with kids. Mm -hmm. You know, what we're going to coach them hard, we enjoy it, uh, but we're also going to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to make sure that it's, uh, you know, th there's a level of, how, as coaches, that from the way we dress to language to, you know, it, it, you, you do it as a professional. You treat mm -hmm. the kids as young adults, um, treat them as professionals. Uh, they, they, I think they love playing for us because they know we love the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put a lot of work in, and they know that. And, uh, you know, so I think they're willing to work, work with us because of the work that we put in. Uh, a lot of knowledge, a lot of years of experience. Uh, we just we did pick up a coach this year, Andrew Lafada, mm -hmm. who's now teaching in the district. And Andrew was for six years was the head coach at Plymouth Canton. Oh wow! And he had coached with Canton, you know, before that with Tim Beckler, and they have one of the best mm -hmm. programs around. So we're adding Andrew Lafada as our as our offensive line coach. Mm -hmm. uh, DJ Reed is back as our wide receiver yep. coach, and DJ. Uh, played at Central Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from East Kentwood. Does a, he's a great teacher of our kids. Uh, Coach Jennings, of course, is back. Oh, e. <laughs> and he he does everything under the sun. And and, and you know half the things that he does, people don't see because it's, it might be the equipment room, might be the film room, you know, might be helping me with some of the paperwork. And he just says, as well as he coaches our tight ends, mm -hmm. um, does a great job there. Coach Gannon is back, and Coach Gannon, you know, the kids know Coach Gannon because he works there in school. Mm -hmm. He's with yep. them every day. Uh, does a great job on the defensive line. Coach Purdy is coaching linebackers, and, and Russ lives in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, phenomenal linebacker coach, was a former defensive coordinator mm -hmm. at Birmingham Sea Home in Blue Fields and Andover. Yep. Uh, coach Powell, you know, one of the best young coaches I've ever seen. He, he you know, he uh, is just phenomenal in terms of his preparation, his understanding of X's and O's, of schemes. Um, you know, the guy's relentless energy. Uh, he's always going, very positive. Uh, you know, I, it's just, I love watching him work, you know, mm -hmm. because he, the way he processes everything and his enthusiasm with his kids, just phenomenal. Uh, Coach Blackstock, you know, what can you say about Coach Blackstock? You know, one of uh -oh. the best teachers of young men I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. You know, just his quality as they come. You know, again, work with our DBs and uh, coaching our special teams. Mm -hmm. So we got, you know, we have a really, really good varsity staff. Uh, Doug Babcock. Uh, is a, a veteran coach that we're bringing back, and he he helps me up in the booth on game days. Mm -hmm. And uh, Doug knows football inside and out. He was on the staff at Grand Valley at Eastern Michigan, and for a long time with Bob LaPointe out at Belleville. So if you added up the number of years of experience that our staff has had, you know it's 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 a really really uh, experienced staff. Most importantly, though, we work well together, mm -hmm. and I think we do a good job preparing and coaching the kids. Coach Blackstock, I've had the honor of coaching alongside at Walden um, mm -hmm. in track, and um, just amazing person, amazing. Coaches kids the right way. Mm -hmm. Yep, coaches Can't kids ask. the right way, absolutely. I mean, obviously Coach E, a mentor to so many. Um, that's a great, great varsity coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, let's talk I will about say there is, there is one more we, we are bringing back as well. Um, Derek Williams is back. Oh, And okay. Derek played for us in 2012. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Was an outside that. linebacker, went to Eastern Michigan, mm -hmm. played for four years at Eastern Michigan, and now he's working in the area, and 
he called me last uh, last winter and said he'd love to get back involved in coaching and he has been phenomenal coaching our outside backers so great to have him back on board it's always fun bringing former players back mm -hmm. coaching and uh, you know we've been able to do that with uh, our younger level staffs um, the importance of le alumni, Lake Orion football yeah, alumni. Mac Max Hornifer is back. Max is coaching at a freshman level. Ooh. And Max is phenomenal. Of course, Blair Williams mm -hmm. coaches the offensive line at our JV. Yep. Uh, James Cathcart, former player, is now the defensive coordinator with our JV. So it's mm -hmm. great to have all these former players back coaching their kids. That's awesome. Other than Sammy, too, my brother, obviously. Yeah, I wouldn't hire him. But <laughs> <laughs> and have had to come up with that one. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the JV coaches. Um, Corey Bell. Yep. Um, Corey Bell comes to comes to the program. He's the former Avondale varsity coach. He's also an Oxford alum, and your nephew. Yes, you uh, know what? It's it's kind of neat how that happened. You know, he uh, he made the decision to leave Avondale. Mm -hmm. He was going to go to Oxford. He's already coaching softball over at Oxford. He's an assistant mm -hmm. coach, and he's going to be an assistant football coach over there. Uh, but he was also looking for a uh, teaching job, and, and they didn't have one for him at Oxford. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I grabbed him. You know, we, uh, our JV coach last year had an opportunity to go back to Orchard Lake St. Mary's mm -hmm. and in an expanded role over there, and so I supported Bobby in doing that, and Bobby did mm -hmm. a great job for us. But uh, so I, I called Corey and said, hey, I need a JV coach. I said, listen, I know you're a varsity coach. You know, I, I, you, he is. He's a varsity level uh, mm -hmm. coach. He's going to be a great head coach again one day. Um, I said, but I need you. I said, hey, come out and coach our JV. He's get involved in our program. Um, we're going to have some teaching openings that he can apply for. Uh, and he, I said, and on Friday nights, he's going to be one of the guys upstairs. With, he'll be up there with Doug, and he's going to be mm -hmm. helping me as well and help us with game planning. So he's done a phenomenal job, stepped right in, and really solidified the JVs. Uh, you know, his wife Kendall just had uh, just had a baby. Congratulations! So yeah, so we've got a new one in the family, and and uh, Mason now is uh, about three months old. So Corey also, fortunately, is uh, he's going to teach math in the building. Mm -hmm. Very good math teacher. So it's always great to have coaches in the building who are teachers. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's been a good fit for us. We talk about the JV assistant coaches. You made mention with them um, with Coach Cathcart. You know, uh, Coach Rob Kiergosian is uh, Rob was a varsity coach for us last year, and I asked Rob, we needed a defensive coordinator, and mm -hmm. Rob has experience on the defensive side of the ball, and I asked Rob if he would go down and solidify the defense and take over there. And he and Rob, you know, he loves coaching at the varsity level. He's been a varsity coach for a number of years, and he said, hey, he said I, I don't like it, but I get it. And he said, for the program, I'll do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And Rob's a teacher in the district, so he's also gonna, he'll help on Friday nights with our defensive side of the ball. Uh, he's, but he's going to take. He's going to be our JV defensive coordinator. Um, he said Blair Williams is coaching the offensive line down mm -hmm. there, and Jeff Smart, who's also our head wrestling coach, is returning mm -hmm. to coach the uh, defensive line. And Jeff's been with us for a number of years, coaching at both the freshman and JV levels. Let's talk about the how about the freshman coaches, Coach Simon, the head coach. Yes, uh, Jacob, phenomenal young guy. Um, another guy who's got a great future in front of him. You know he'll be he'll be a, an awesome varsity coach one day as well. Mm -hmm. uh, James Cathcart will be his first year as a defensive coordinator. James has really worked hard with Ricky. We've mm -hmm. done a lot this summer, so he's going to do a great job there. Max Hornifer is going down mm -hmm. to help. Uh, Jeff Konslick. Uh, um, Jeff returns as our offensive line coach, and Jeff played at the uh, University of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, his kids came through Orion. Uh, great guy, and he, so he'll be back with the offensive line. And Trent Elkins. Is mm -hmm. back and Trenton played for us, and yep. Trenton's going to coach a defensive line. Trenton played at Adrian College for four years, mm -hmm. and uh, Trenton bring, brings a lot of enthusiasm with them. So it's it's going to be a great crew down there. I know that because I coached him in shot put when he was still oh, yeah. in shot put at Walden. Absolutely, Walmart. yeah. Um, talk about the the um, middle school programs. You got two Lake Orion programs. Mm -hmm. um, talk about talk about the middle school programs, the coaches and um, the players. and You know, Dave McKay, the principal over at Scripps, does a nice mm -hmm. job of really heading up that program. We've got uh, good coaches, both as head coaches, assistant coaches. Um, we're going to run, obviously we'll run two eighth grade teams, mm -hmm. two seventh grade teams. Um, we divide them up equally. Uh, mm -hmm. The goal at the middle school level is to teach them football fundamentals. We want them to be successful. 
but winning will take care of itself. I, I want them to have fun playing football. I want them to learn how to play and have fun playing football. And they start to build that camaraderie with their buddies. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we'll have a, like an eighth grade green, eighth grade white, they're interchangeable. We, we mm -hmm. might switch guys week to week if we need to. If, we're, if one team is running back heavy and the other team needs some, they may switch over. That's why we did it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just gives more kids opportunities to play. We've had good teams, and uh, you know, I, we're, it's, you know, obviously you need to have strong feeder programs. Mm -hmm. And the middle school does a nice job of getting the kids acclimated to school ball. They play a tough schedule. I mean, we play uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the Clarksons, the Rochester Middle Schools. Oxfords. We play the Oxfords. We play. It's a tough schedule, but uh, you know we always compete and do really well. What about the youth level programs? Um, Same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's uh, it, you know those get bigger and bigger every year. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's a lot. Of, you know that there's a lot of work that goes into that with uh, the dads that volunteer to coach it. They put in a ton of hours. Um, Todd Garris has a nice job of, you know, had cheering up that program the last several years. You know, it's it's it, you have to, it's uh, it's very important. You know, I can go back years and years. Some of our best players that we've ever had started out back in the Lake Orion youth program. Mm -hmm. You know, and the question is always, parents say, well, when should my child play football? Do they need to start playing at eight years old, nine years old, or can they wait till they're older? And I said, that, you know, it depends on the individual. You know, there's some, you know, we've got flag football all over the place. For some kids, flag football may be the way to go right now. Maybe they're just, they're not ready for the tackle aspect. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, the one thing that, that, we've, that we've done, we also have a program, this, and I, this is all Coach Blackstock. Mm -hmm. We have uh, what we call rookie tackle, where they play the youngest level of our youth program is rookie tackle, which means they're playing on a smaller field, with with fewer players, mm -hmm. and it's, there's some rules that really it's really a combination of almost it's tackle football, but it's very similar to the rules of flag football, and the kids it's really a more of a wide open game, and the kids really enjoy it. So it's 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 more of an age appropriate level of football. There's a lot of communities that are jumping on board and want to mm -hmm. get involved. So you know there's there's different levels of football from everybody from flag football to rookie tackle the youth league to middle school. I, it's 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 uh, you know, there's a lot out there. The other thing I think that is great with the game of football is I don't think it's ever been more safe. The equipment's better. Mm -hmm. The coaching is better. The rules have been changed. The football is a safe game to play. It really is. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's you know it's it's still a collision sport. Right. Um, but you know, you look at hockey. You look at lacrosse. You look at you know, it's it, it's you know, it's, it's sort of those sports are collision sports as well. I think the, mm -hmm. the lessons the kids learn. And you know the fact that it's coached in a safe way, I think, is invaluable to our community. And then those programs just help make us better. I want to talk about the support staff, and then I want to talk about the pep club. Um, how important are both of those? I want to talk support staff first. Obviously, Sam and I do a lot as well. Um, but also talk about um, the pep club as well. How important have they been? Well, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see. You know, in terms of, you know, the uh, we have a varsity football game. You guys know the setup starts. We mm -hmm. start setting up yep. early in the day. Mm -hmm. But then we have a whole crew. Andrew Anderley has been, a, been one of the biggest assets we've had is, is uh, and Dan Dabrowski. Yep. They're bringing the headsets and the video cameras and all those things that are necessary now that you, you, know, you can use the video, you know, that helps us make adjustments. But in order to use it, you got to set it up. you got people mm -hmm. to run it. Um, you know, George Edwards has been filming for us for forever. You know, so you, mm -hmm. there's so many people that help. Uh, Darren Eaton helped us out quite a bit last year mm -hmm. with setup. Um, and it's hard, and we take a trailer and we tow a trailer to the games, and we only try to take what we need. But there's so much behind the scenes that goes into that to get it ready for game day. To you know, uh, so uh, our, our that crew is phenomenal. And then the Pep Club, you know, the Pep Club is our, our the Pep Club does a wonderful job they have for years. Um, our kids have no idea how good they have it because they, they're it's just all they're used to. But mm -hmm. you know, I tell them all the time they're spoiled rotten, <laughs> and because of the the pep club does such a great job of taking care of it. But you know, the, it's the pep club does it in terms of it's a labor of love for them, gets them involved with the program. Mm -hmm. We get to know the parents uh, a little bit better, a little bit better because they're around, mm -hmm. um, and like I said, they support the kids. And the kids really, you know, really feel that support as well. So it's you know, it's it's I think it's a very special program to play in. 
Um, it's one of the things we talk about, be great, gratitude. Mm -hmm. Recognize how fortunate we are to play, you know, in this community, for our fans, for our parents, you know, with beautiful uniforms, with nice mm -hmm. equipment, you know, hopefully with a knowledgeable coaching staff. I mean, just have some mm -hmm. great, understand how fortunate we are to, to be playing for Lake Orion. Any final thoughts on, on, the, on what we talked about? No, I think it's, I think playing football at Lake Orion is special. And I, and I think people that, you know, and it's not just football, all of our athletes, all of our athletics are special. You know, but you, they have to experience it. People describe Lake Orion as, you know, Lake Orion's a small town in a big town body. You know, and it's from, you know, from the Owen TV crew that comes and sets mm -hmm. up, does every game, to, you know, from the dance team, to the cheerleaders, to the marching band. Friday nights at home at Lake Orion is nothing more than a big Lake Orion party. And, yeah, uh, it is. And it's, and it's a ton of fun. And it's, and it's great to be part of. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll be right back with the Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ON TV. Nine. Eight. Eight. Are you or someone you know having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance abuse crisis? 988 connects you to compassionate, confidential support for free. 988. 988 is the new three-digit dialing code for the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. For years, the Lifeline, formerly known as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, has answered tens of millions of calls and helped people overcome mental health-related distress. 988 is the same trusted resource. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and get you additional help if needed. There is hope. The Lifeline works. You are not alone in crisis. Just call, text, or chat 988. 988! Knowing how to identify signs of crisis in others and help connect them to resources like the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is an important way to prevent suicide in Lake Orion. For information about free suicide prevention trainings offered in our community, please visit the North Oakland Community Coalition at NOCCMI.org. Welcome back to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. Wonderful. Um, I want to talk about the schedule for this season. Um, we'll open up August 24th. We're actually the first game of the MHSA football season. We're going to be playing the Spartans of Livonia Stevenson at the Big House, which is at the University of Michigan. Coach, um, talk about Livonia Stevenson. You know, it, uh, well, the game came about because mm -hmm. uh, their league decided that they were going to have one and nine open. Mm -hmm. So they were looking for games. And so hard for us to find games, people willing yep. to play. And uh, so talked with their athletic director. They said they'd love to play. And, and uh, you know, let them know that there's a chance we could play at the University of Michigan. They, they really got them excited. So uh, they're solid. They've got some good athletes. They're always tough kids. It's going to be a good opener for us. It's going to be... You know, both teams were in similar situations last year. That mm -hmm. we were both 500. Both teams return a good amount of talent, so it's going to be a a good game right out of the gate. It's also it's a noon kickoff. It's um, also the as I said, the first game of the MHSA football season. So yeah, that, well, it's exciting. You know, we do, if we love the fact that we're going to kick off the season. We had a choice to play at noon or three, mm -hmm. and uh, we jumped at the opportunity to play at noon, being the first game. It also allows us to get a full warm-up in, mm -hmm. uh, not be rushed, uh, playing at Michigan, and also at 3 o'clock, I think the heat of the day can get pretty right. pretty tough. So hopefully it keeps it a little cooler for our guys mm -hmm. and for our fans. So uh, that's why we're playing at noon. How important is it? Um, we've obviously played at Michigan one time in 2018. Um, how important is it, that experience of being at the big house? How important is that well, for the kids? Well, a couple things. First of all, if anybody's interested, uh, tickets will be available. We should have the tickets uh, by August 7th. We should have the tickets will be available at the athletic office um, and through the pep club. So mm -hmm. tickets, they're actually, uh, tickets are $10 a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but how important is it to play there? You know what, I think it's a, whenever we have a chance to play in a special facility like that, I think it's great for the kids. The kids will remember it. 
you know, just as uh, you know, our, our basketball teams have played at OU. Yep. The girls last year played at LCA. Yep. You know, years ago, our hockey team was able to play at the uh, the uh, uh, Comerica when they had out, mm -hmm. they had the rink out there at Comerica. Yep. Um, baseball team has played at the Midland uh, Minor League Park and also mm -hmm. Jimmy John. So whenever you have a chance to do that for your team, is I think it's it's special. Uh, but I think it also allows us to. This is an atypical game, which means we're going to start at noon. Um, Preparation is going to be different. It's a longer mm -hmm. road trip. Yep. So if we happen to make the playoffs and we have something like that again, it's good to pull the kids out of their comfort zone to make sure that mm -hmm. they're ready to play. Uh, so, you know, football players are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they ask them to do something a little bit different and they struggle with it. Mm -hmm. So this is good for us to go play in a bigger venue, different time, Longer bus ride, the whole deal. So hopefully it'll help us down the road. Week two, um, we play Harper Woods at Harper Woods. Now, Harper Woods is the newest team in the OAA. They compete in the OAA White. They, their last season, they were very competitive. They had hard-fought games with Southfield, Groves, and Rochester. Um, what's your take about Harper Woods? Talented. They return a lot. Uh, they expect to be very good this year. Mm -hmm. You know, playing them at Harper Woods is going to be a, a big challenge for us. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's like any other team in our league, it's, we, we got to play well. Oxford, week three. Um, interesting stat line. Um, overall, overall, the record against Oxford is 31 10 and 4. Um, the road team since 2016, um, we can give credit to Max Horner for his band dancing. Um, uh, the road team has won every game since the, like in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2021, and last year, the road team has won every game. Um, this year's game is at Lake Orion. Um, what's it going to take to break that streak? Well, I, I just think it shows that, you know, it, it's when that game is on, throw everything out. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's such a hard fought, great game to play in. It doesn't matter where you're playing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so what's it going to take? We just got to play well. You know, we got to play well, do what we do. And, and uh, you know, Oxford's always tough. You know, they're well coached. Uh, we just have to play well. Also, the double O trophy is on the line as well. Absolutely. You Talk know, and about we, we take a lot of pride in the fact that, that, that you know, that, that, that place has stayed at Lake Orion most years. Mm -hmm. And we intend to keep it there again. Um, talk about briefly the history of the Double O Trophy because we talked about that a little bit. Well, it started out way, way back. It wasn't, it wasn't known as the Double O Trophy. Mm -hmm. It was known as the Bronze Boot. Mm -hmm. And the Bronze Boot, it was, it was actually a gold boot that was mounted on top of the, mm -hmm. you know, on a kicking tee, mounted on, you know, a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And the last year they played, Lake Orion Oxford played for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And the last game they, they played was 1983. Mm -hmm. In 1983, unfortunately, Oxford beat Lake Orion that year, mm -hmm. and we didn't play again. I want to say it was 28 years until we played again. So for 28 years, that trophy sat in Bud Riley's closet. Mm -hmm. We don't know what happened to the trophy. When the, when the, so they were going to play in 2010, mm -hmm. Bill Reese is the one that that got together with I believe it was Pat Ball was the athletic director mm -hmm. at Oxford, and they said we got to find this trophy. And they went they went to Bud and said, Bud, where's this trophy? I don't know if Bud remembered where the trophy was. <laughs> so, or, so they went and so they worked with Tom Traurig at the Village Trophy mm -hmm. Shop and they recreated the trophy. Mm -hmm. They took this big bronze football and they, they put all the games around it. Mm -hmm. Now it became known as the Double O Trophy, but it was originally known as the Bronze Boot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we still have that trophy to signify uh, the matchup. And it's, you know, it's just, it means a lot. It means a lot to both sides. Mm -hmm. I was going to mention how much that means to both communities. That's obviously bragging rights. Bragging rights mm -hmm. for a year. You know, we, we've everybody's got a lot of friends in Oxford. Mm -hmm. Communities very similar. Communities are very close, mm -hmm. and you just bump into each other. It's just you know, it's just another. Uh, it's just like I said, bragging rights for a year. Mm -hmm. It's always a lot of fun having that game. Um, West Bloomfield, week four. Um, that's going to also be at, at Lake Orion as well. Um, talk about West Bloomfield. They returned some incredible players. Um, you know, they lost a lot as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, your West Bloomfield, you know, they, they, they're very talented. They do have new coaches here. Their coach Zach was their Gilbert. offensive coordinator last year. So I don't think that they'll lose a lot in terms of continuity there. Mm -hmm. so we just have to play well. I think we'll match up. I mean, they've, they've got some guys that, 
you know, they've got some really good players, but so do we. And I, I really think it's just going to come down to who plays better. It should be an exciting game. Hopefully one of the best games in the state that week. Never forget that 2019 classic with West Bloomfield. That was a... That was a yeah. That was that was that was yeah. The multiple overtime mm -hmm. game over two days. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the best high school football games I can ever remember seeing. Mm -hmm. Stony Creek. Um, Stony Creek um, was very experienced last year. This year they're a very young team. Um, well coached. They've always been physical. They're tough. Um, what do you think about them? Same thing. They do a good job of what they do. Uh, you know, they don't beat themselves. Fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. They're well coached. Uh, you know, we, it's not it's only a red game. We got to play well. Adams. Um, when you think about Adams, Tony Petrito, longtime coach over there. They also run the Veer offense over there, and they return one of the best players in the state of Michigan, and um, Brady Prescorn. Yeah, Brady's a nightmare to try to match up with him. He's six foot six. Catch, he can run, strong, mm -hmm. catches everything. Uh, Michigan commit, um, good player. You know, we'll have to have a, like a plan for him. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they, 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 Tony's one of the best coaches around. You know, the Veer is very difficult to play against. So again, we just have to play play really well and take care of the ball and, and do what we do. Also, their um, freshman team last year went undefeated as well, and they they're, they're going to be their sophomore class coming up is is pretty solid. Absolutely, no, they're they're always going to be tough. Um, Clarkston. Um, an interesting stat since 2010, um, not a good stat, but we've been 1-13 since 2010. Um, it's another trophy game. It's a rivalry game. Um, Clarkson's also got two very solid players in, um, in Steffens and Cozen. Both of them are back. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're always talented. Uh, you know what? We, we've played some good games against mm -hmm. them. It's a matter oh, yeah. of they've had some good teams, mm -hmm. and you know what? We, we're going to match up really well against them this year, and we just have to. You know, there's certain games. You know, you look at it. Uh, we, in the games that we got beat last year, uh, the turnover margin was not good. Mm -hmm. When we took care of the ball last year, we won games. We turned the ball over, we lost games, and that's something that we can control. So, you know, same thing with Clarkson, same thing with anybody we play. If we take care of the football and we play the way we're capable, I really like our chances. Got Farmington week eight. Um, Farmington won the blue last year. They are moving up to the white. Um, the last two games that we played Farmington have been at Lake Orion. Uh, I remember the 2012 game very well. Um, talk about Farmington. Always talented, well coached. Uh, we beat them a couple of years ago. Last time we pl we we play them, last we play them here. I want to say 2016, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, beat them in a dogfight. Mm -hmm. they, they had a really good team. A linebacker went to Florida. Um, they you know so they're always tough. They're always talented. You know it's gonna it's a non-league game. Mm -hmm. So I you know our, our squad tends to be a little bit bigger, which gives us an advantage sometimes in numbers wear mm -hmm. them down. But it'll be a tough game. Talk about homecoming. Um, obviously, homecoming is always typically a big deal in Lake Orion. Um, talk about homecoming in terms of does that prepare does that prepare your kids? Or is, it, does it, is it a distraction? Is it a is it a good thing? A bad thing? It, it's it, it's added distractions, mm -hmm. but it's also it's fun. I mean, the kids you know it's neat to see your kids get involved in the school spirit, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, we try to let, you know, we try to find that fine line of, hey, participate and have fun, but mm -hmm. make sure you're ready to go. The biggest thing I worry about is because there's events all the time, mm -hmm. I worry about the kids making sure that if we're, if we're in a tight one late in the game, mm -hmm. that they still have the energy to be able to perform. Don't wear it. Let's not wear ourselves out Thursday night, at the powder puff game mm -hmm. or, or Sunday night, at activity night. Let's just, participate in those mm -hmm. things but let's make sure that we remember hey we got to be great come friday because that's our job we know our job is win the game on friday but i do want the kids i want the kids to enjoy it and have fun and mm -hmm. and it's it's a great week our student our, our student leadership class is a phenomenal job i know that the powder puff game there's a lot of bragging rights between the seniors and the juniors we, ride, we probably run the best powder puff game around it's a lot of fun the, the girls play Girls have a ball playing. We get an army on both sides of mm -hmm. the ball to play, but they also they it's come the game itself has come a long ways. They do it with great sportsmanship too. Mm -hmm. You no longer have the the you know it's it's they they 
yes, there's a, it's a good rivalry, but it's it's a healthy rivalry, and mm-hmm. they do it together, and they and they uh, the game's been it's been a very classy game the last several years. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, week nine, we play Celine. Celine, very solid program. Um, travel down to Celine. Uh, last year, Celine beat Celine beat us pretty handily. Last year, they had a very good quarterback, um, Notre Dame commit. Um, CJ Carr, yep. CJ Carr special, but, but I would take that game. We you know, we mm-hmm. t- we we took the opening kickoff, and uh, we were you know uh, we we were driving, and, and Tristan broke off a nice run, mm-hmm. and at the end he didn't secure the ball properly, and, and the ball came out, and they recovered. Uh, Billy, who does never fumble, mm-hmm. you know Billy coughed one up. Uh, I think we turned the ball over three times, and it gave you know you cannot you cannot. You cannot turn the ball over against a team like Celine and give them extra possessions. And that's what mm-hmm. we did. And so, again, we we moved the ball up and down. I, I want to say we had you know well over 300 yards of total offense. Mm-hmm. But if we turn the ball over, you know we're not finishing and we're giving them and we're, and we're putting our defense in a bad spot. You know it, it, it's when you're playing against one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Mm-hmm. You know Notre Dame commit. You know we got to make sure that that we help them on the offensive side of the ball. We didn't do that last year. Obviously, talk about briefly the, the schedule. It's one of the toughest schedules in the state. Um, what's your take about the schedule? Well, as much as we look at the schedule, I want everybody on schedule to say, "Holy cow, we got to play Lake Orion." Mm-hmm. So that's what it is. We, you know, it is what it is. We, you know, we're we have high expectations. You know, we we we, we want to win the OA Red. Mm-hmm. We want to qualify for the playoffs. So we mm-hmm. want to make a run, be one of the best teams in the, play, in the state. Be playing great football. You know at the end of the season you know in order to be the best you got to beat the best Mm -hmm. you take a look at the years where we've made deep runs or year we won the championship you look at those teams that we beat we 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 didn't we had some tough roads to get there Mm -hmm. you know when it whether it be playing eisenhower and dakota and fordson and cast tech and you know that's who we played so that's we gotta get ready to play um you know we think we got a really talented roster if we stay healthy that's always the key if we can stay healthy uh, then we can keep getting better every single week. We think we have a chance to be special. Talk about the um, the J- the JVs. Pretty much got the same schedule. Freshman week two, they are playing Holly's JV, mm-hmm. and then week eight, they are playing South Lion East. What do you think about the freshman games? And the well, games? It, it was, it's it's challenged because not every team, not every program has a freshman team. So mm-hmm. we had to fill in a couple dates. But we we're fortunate that. Uh, Holly was looking for one for their JV, and we could not find one week two. So at mm-hmm. least we got them. So we, our freshman that week will match up well with Holly's JV. Mm-hmm. And then South Lion East is just a uh, it's just another freshman team. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're really lucky we were able to get that and give our freshman a full schedule. What is your expectations for this upcoming season? Our expectation is I, I want to make I, my goal is that we uh, not only not only play to our potential but beyond. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I really can't I, I can't put, you know. Of course, we want to win every game. We want to, you know, we'd like to win mm-hmm. it all. But it's not about wins and losses. It's, it's, it's us doing things right off the field, preparing to play to be great, and then going out and playing the best we can. That's it. That's all you can ask. You know, it's it's a game that you know we're going to make mistakes. Uh, hopefully, we make fewer than the other team. Mm-hmm. But we're going to play hard, and that's all I ever ask. You know what? You go out, you play as hard as you can. Don't worry about what it says on the scoreboard. Play as hard as you can, and then you line up and you shake the other team, you shake their hand from the guys across from you. That's all you can ask. Mm-hmm. And I think if we take care of what we can take care of, control what we need to control, the scoreboard will take care of itself. Point well taken, Coach. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks mm-hmm. for having me. Thank you so much. Um, I would also encourage you guys to come out to Dragon Stadium or come out on the road and support our Lake Orion Dragons. And also... If you can't, then watch our games on Orion Neighborhood Television, ONTV, and also, and also, and also catch us and catch us in the future as well. All right, that'll do it for the Lake Orion Football Preview Show. Have a great evening, Lake Orion. Take care and see you soon.